Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Liam Douglas here, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the PSAM dial on your camera and what it's used for. But before we get into that, I wanted to remind you to check out the Liam Photography Podcast. You can find the show anywhere the podcasts are found, and I have a massive catalog of 363 episodes that you can go back and listen to at your leisure. Okay, so for this video, I was hoping to get this video filmed while I still had the Fujifilm X-H2 on loan from Fujifilm North America, but I ended up running into time constraints and I wasn't able to get it done. Now, I don't currently have any cameras that have a PSAM dial. All of my Fujifilm bodies are rangefinder style bodies and do not have that particular dial set up. So I'm going to include a shot in this video of what a PSAM dial looks like and then we're gonna talk about it. So the PSAM dial is also known as the camera's mode dial and it controls the different photography modes that you can set your camera to. Now the first one, the P in PSAM stands for program mode. In program mode, you choose the ISO that you wanna use for your images and the computer inside your camera will automatically set the aperture and the shutter speed to get you a balanced exposure. Now, cases where you might want to use program mode and, and have ISO is your main priority is if you're doing low light photography, maybe indoors at a wedding or at an indoor concert venue or something like that, where the ISO is the factor that you want to control the most and you're not as concerned with the shutter speed or the aperture settings. So that's program mode. The next on the PSAM dial, the S stands for shutter priority. And in this mode, you set the shutter speed that you want to use, and then the camera will decide the ISO and the aperture. Now, some examples of where shutter priority can come in handy, let's say you're shooting motorsports like NASCAR or IMSA racing, which I used to do a lot of, especially when I lived in Georgia, and you want to be able to freeze the cars as they're going around the track. You would set your shutter speed, for example, to like one one thousandth of a second or one two thousandth of a second to make sure you can freeze the action, make the car tack sharp in your images and you let the camera set the ISO and the aperture accordingly so that you can get that action frozen. Another example of where you might want to control the shutter speed, where that might be your main priority, would be photographing wildlife in flight, like say maybe hummingbirds coming to a feeder in your yard. By using an uh, one one thousandth of a second or one two thousandth of a second shutter speed, you can actually freeze a hummingbird's lightning fast wings and get a tack sharp image of their wings with all the details, the feathers showing and all of that good stuff. So that is what the S is for on the PSAM dial. Now the A stands for aperture priority. This is where you're going to choose the aperture of your exposure by setting it either in the camera or in the case of Fujifilm lenses, most of their lenses have an aperture ring on the barrel. You can set the aperture to f2.8, f4, f8, whatever you want to use, and then you let the camera set the ISO and the shutter speed accordingly. Now, examples of where you may want to use aperture priority would be for like portrait photography because you want to have the same depth of field in all of your portraits, or uh, maybe even in landscape photography where you know you're going to be using an F8 for all your landscapes, and that's your biggest concern so that everything in the scene is in focus. That is another example of where aperture priority can come in handy as a mode. Now, the final mode on the PSAM dial is for manual mode. Now, this is the fully manual, you're doing all of the work mode. So, in manual mode, you're going to set the ISO, you're going to set the shutter speed, and you're going to set the aperture. Now, I know a lot of you student photographers or amateur and hobbyist photographers might be intimidated by manual mode, but it doesn't really need to be intimidating. All you have to do is get down pat your muscle memory on the exposure triangle, ISO, aperture, and shutter speed, and then also rely on the light meter that's built into your camera. Whether it's a DSLR or mirrorless, it does have a built-in meter that will let you know if you're overexposed, underexposed, or spot on. So you don't need to be intimidated by manual mode. 
Now, many cameras do also have some additional positions on the PSAM dial. Now, I'm not going to go into all the automated modes like uh, macro mode, sport mode, stuff like that that are on the consumer level cameras, um, but on most cameras, you also have some C settings. You'll have like C1, C2, 3C. Some camera bodies can even go as high as C7 on the PSAM dial. Now, what those are is those are custom setting preset modes on your camera. So what you would actually do is you would go into the menu on your camera, find your custom menu, custom settings menu, and then what you can do is you can preset the ISO, the aperture and shutter speed that you want to use for a certain type of photography, and then save it to one of those presets, C1, C2, C3. So let's say you frequently shoot outdoor landscapes. Maybe you've got C1 set to ISO 100 or ISO 200, whatever your lowest ISO is. You got your aperture set at F8 and you got your shutter speed set at 1 250th of a second because those settings will work for you pretty much the majority of the time when you're doing landscape photography. Well, you can save those settings in the C1 position on your PSAM dial. And that way, anytime you turn back to C1, your camera will instantly go back to those settings, no matter what settings they had previously been configured for on any of the other modes on that dial. And the same thing with the other C slots. So C2, maybe you got that set for indoor portraits and low light situation, where you know you're going to want your ISO at like 3200, you're going to want your aperture at f2.8, depending on the lens you're using, and you want your shutter speed at 1 1 60th of a second. You know, much slower shutter speed to help with the low light situation. You can save that into C2, and then bam, you can jump from C1 outdoor to the landscapes, turn it to C2, bam, now you're set for indoor portraits, and so on and so forth. So those are the major components in the PSAM dial. I hope this helped to give you a better understanding of what it is and how it can benefit your photography. I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and turn on all notifications, and I will see you all in the next video.